the German foreign ministry thinks that us Africans are animals because we allowed the visit of the Russian foreign minister. The African Union was angered by a tweet from the German's foreign ministry account that indicated or tried to insinuate that we allowed the Russian foreign minister, Sergei Lavrov, to visit some of our African countries. And they go ahead to say that the only time such a diplomat should be allowed to visit Africa is if they are coming to see animals. Now, I, we don't know what they meant by saying that coming to see animals. I don't know whether they think Africans are animals or the only good thing to see in Africa are animals. Either way, the details or the truth can be found in that tweet or the writers of that tweet and the people they represent because Germans are the most racist people in the whole world when it comes to Africans. And you don't need to ask any African studying or living in Germany. Just look at what happened last year when this conflict in Ukraine started. Some of our African brothers left Ukraine and they were going towards the Polish and the German border and they were treated in the most brutal way way in 2022 you know so german are still racist they still view africans as savages and civilized animals that's how they view us no matter what they say that's how they see us so that's why i'm saying the details are there in that tweet the other thing you have to recall how german used to colonize some of our countries they colonized tanzania they colonized rwanda burundi and they never developed those countries we know how they were just looting minerals and shipping all that back to Germany. And then they come here, they have the audacity to tell us that we should not engage with Russia. The reason why the Russian foreign minister chose to go to South Africa, Angora, Botswana, Eswatini, and maybe he even wanted to go to Mozambique was a simple historical fact, you know, because you recall these countries were still fighting this apartheid government and these colonial powers. And it's only the Soviets, and particularly Russia, that helped them to fight for their independence. And most of these countries, that is Angora, Mozambique, Botswana, Namibia, and South Africa, credit their freedom and independence to Russia. Because, you know, the Portuguese had refused to give Mozambique and Angora independence. And now it had to be kicked out through, you know, freedom fighters, through the struggle. And these freedom fighters were being trained in Tanzania and others were being trained in, I think, Zimbabwe. And the Soviets, the Russian was supplying them with AK-47s and other weapons. And you know, Mozambique is the only country in the world that features a Kalashnikov or an AK-47 on their national flag. The symbol there is the struggle symbol and it's because the Russians assisted them. And the current president of South Africa was a young man, among other young men, fighting for independence from the South African apartheid, you know, regime, the, the white settlers in South Africa who are ruling them. And these guys were also training, I think, in Zimbabwe, and they were being supplied training materials and weapons by Russia. So you want to tell now the current president of South Africa to forget all that history. And I saw some white South Africans, you know, those settlers or their descendants, carrying banners in the streets of South Africa. The banners say that they do not support Russia. They do not want that foreign minister from Russia in South Africa. I mean, these are the same people who are, you know, oppressing the South Africans, the black South Africans. These are the apartheid regime supporters. And the United States supported this apartheid regime. The same apartheid South African white settler government had colonized Namibia and it was also supporting the Portuguese to fight, you know, freedom fighters in Angora. So they wanted the Portuguese to continue staying in Angora or they wanted the Portuguese to leave so that they can take over that country. Whichever way, the reason they were fighting, no one cares. But the U.S. supported them and the U.S. went ahead to designate the freedom fighters in South Africa, among them Nelson Mandela, Jacob Zuma, you know, people like that, former archbishop, I think. And then we have even the current president, Cyril Ramaphosa. They were designated as terrorists in the same, you know, weight as Al-Qaeda. So they were terrorists up until the year 2000. And the U.S. wants the current South African president to ignore that, to forget that he was once a terrorist. Yeah. And now don't stop engaging with Russia. That's what they want. And this German or the EU, you know, there's nothing good to write 
about German. This is the same country of Nazis, you know, the Second World War. And they, they, it's the same country that still has textbooks in their primary schools, in their elementary schools, that teaches their young people or shows Africans as animals. So they draw us as monkeys with tails in their books. So they have this system of indoctrination where young Germans are taught to view Africans as inferior. So by the time a German becomes an adult, they have already been taught to hate us even before they meet us. So this is the same. That's why I said the details are in that tweet. And do you think that the only thing any foreign diplomat would be coming to Africa to do is to view animals? Because it turns out German diplomats in Africa come to see animals. They come on safari. So what do you think? Let us know in the comment section below.